Clothing retailers are surging with a swell of inventory right now. And how they decide to manage that inventory could mean the difference between a strong operator and a weak operator. And that's what I wanna cover in this video. But first, let me run the intro. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's get right into this one. So the Wall Street Journal ran an article where they're saying that apparel sellers could be leaving money on the table if they lean too heavily on the fact that their lackluster sales are a result of pinched wallets with consumers. And effectively what they're saying there is that to counteract pinched wallets with consumers, they would wanna fire sale their inventory just to get it off the balance sheet a little bit and also drive sustainability in the revenue. But you do it at a cost of your operating income and your net income because if you're selling that product for a lower price then your cogs of course as a percentage of your revenues goes up your gross profit comes down because you're just selling it for a lower price you're making less profit on it and thus your bottom line looks worse and so there are other options for retailers in this environment that's kind of what this article is trying to point out and so you can see here that they've given you three ways that they can address this inventory issue right now. The first way is you can just bite the bullet and write off that inventory right now. The second thing you can do is discount that inventory heavily. And the third thing you can do is pack it away until storage until next season. And I do believe that most retailers are kind of looking at their inventory right now, seeing what they can stash away until next season and seeing what they might have to fire sell right now and seeing what they have to write off right now. So I think they're all doing a little bit of the three. And so the people that are, or the companies that are best able to manage it are gonna do the best in this environment. And that's kind of like a duh, of course, that's what's gonna happen. And so I wanted to give a little bit of a better example. So you can see that I just wrote here on the top left that although balance sheets will be swelling with inventory, it may not necessarily be the best move to fire sell them. One item that came to mind is especially like items that are continuously demanded like American Eagle jeans. I really like them. I think they're the best in the market. I mean, that's personal perspective, but that's something that they can put away for next season. And hey, American Eagle, by putting away those jeans, may not necessarily sell as much because they're not fire selling them, but they could essentially make more profit on them as a consumer comes back in the following season or the season after that. So we'll see how this all plays out, but I think there is a somewhat of an optimization challenge here. But I just mentioned American Eagle. What does American Eagle look like from the perspective of value? Like, is it cheap enough to buy right now? And I actually built a model on them, which I do want to share with you. So you can see here that I actually brought revenue growth to 0% in fiscal year 2023, but I brought the gross profit margin down. And so I'm not bringing that gross profit margin up to their normal levels until 2024. But one could argue that the way that I'm forecasting revenue and gross profit margins might be a little bit aggressive. But the, I did that on purpose because I wanna make a point here. And the point that I wanna make is on the valuation. I'm aggressive on their revenue growth and on their gross profit margins. And then if I put a terminal multiple of 15 times earnings, notice how you would expect the valuation to be much higher if I'm being aggressive on a revenue growth and gross margin perspective. But notice that the valuation is only around $15 per share. The current share price is around 12 bucks a share. So the share price as a percentage of its valuation is approximately 80%. And so if you were to bring down those expectations a little bit, you could argue that American Eagle is fairly valued in this environment. Even you could go as far as saying it's slightly overvalued. And so we could see more downward pressure on this stock. It's not a position that I'm looking to enter at least at the current share price right now. But I don't like to leave it on that note. I wanna point out one retailer that I have added to the portfolio and has done pretty well, which is Canada Goose. Now I did do a full Full video on Canada Goose, which I will link to at the end of this video, but just quickly notice that they're actually accelerating their forecast for fiscal year 2023. Their revenue is not going backwards and they expect positive earnings even in this environment. And so the thesis behind this is that this is one of those retailers that produces most of their stuff in Canada. And so they're not dealing with supply chain issues or cost increases like other retailers are. Also, they're expanding internationally. So they're going the other way. They're going into China, into Europe, and into the US when it comes to expanding globally. So here you have this Canadian retailer of a premium brand that everybody's aware of, 
and they're going the opposite direction, which is good for them in this current environment. And here's how I'm forecasting revenue growth. So in fiscal year 2023, I'm just following management's forecast and I'm forecasting at around 20% growth. That's management expectations. And then thereafter, I'm actually slowing growth a little bit. So to 12 and a half percent a year into 2028 and then seven and a half percent a year thereafter. So very healthy growth rates for this company. And the reason why you're seeing very healthy growth rates for them is because they still have a lot of room to grow in the US in Europe and in Asia Pacific region, which they've been growing at a very fast clip. So there's a lot of blue oceans here for this brand. But the question is, what does the valuation look like for this company? Well, you can see here, I'm using a lower terminal multiple than you could probably use in this environment. Maybe you can use 22 and a half times earnings. I would think that that's more fair, but just to prove a point, using 20 times earnings, you can see that I'm valuing the company at approximately 30 bucks a share. It's currently trading at approximately 18 bucks a share. So the share price as a percentage of its intrinsic value is approximately 66%. And you could probably sell cash secured puts at 15 bucks. So you get it at approximately 50% of its intrinsic value in this current environment and probably do pretty well on this. And once again, this is never advice, but here's a stronger retailer selling for a lower price as a percentage of its intrinsic value. And it's another way that I can take on some retail exposure of an exceptional brand that'll be around for a long time. Now, if you're not into retail, there are other opportunities available to you. But before I go into those, I just want to point out that approximately 80% of the watch time on this channel is com coming from people that are not subscribed. So please, if you have the opportunity, please consider subscribing. Then also, here are the opportunities that I want to point out that if you're not interested in retail, notice that as a market continues continues to decline. There are now 30 names on the tracker that the Patreons get access to that are trading under 75% of their intrinsic value and six names trading under 50% of their intrinsic value. So you can see there's Alibaba up there. There's also Zillow. So there's some real estate exposure if you want it. There's Paramount Global. So there's your online streaming TV exposure if you want it. Canada Goose, which is what I just showed you. And Microsoft. So that's a surprise. Microsoft has started to come down. Now, I did tell you guys earlier on this channel when Microsoft was trading at approximately 100% of its intrinsic value that I would be watching this one closely. I really, really want to own Microsoft and have it as a position in my portfolio. And I'm getting closer to pulling the trigger. I don't think I'm going to wait for Microsoft to come down to 50% of its intrinsic value before I make the purchase. Now, the bigger question is, how do you get access to all of those models that the Patreons get access to? Well, you can get access to all those models at the lower tier of the Patreon. And if you want to join us for an epic live presentation every month, you can join us at that higher tier. Now, the other thing that I do want to point out to you guys is that I just talked about Canada Goose, but I did a full breakdown of the company and the opportunity, which I will link to right here.